so I just got home from Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And ever since I've gotten home, things have been pretty hectic. The first thing I wanted to do was a wellness check on the Malibu, change oil, transmission fluid, and make sure we don't have any issues creeping up on us. There was a little bit of stuff on the drain plug of the transmission, but overall, the Malibu passed with flying colors. The 64 C10, however, well, that's another story. We'll get to that here in a minute. In the meantime, Billy sent me a text asking if he could bring his Mustang out and use the lift to work on it. He had Kenny blast the plastic dip off the wheels and then brought it in the shop to figure out why it had a dead cylinder. It turns out it has a bad spark plug wire, so Uncle Bucko took him to Jigs. This is where the professionals are. <laughs> and thankfully, Uncle Terry was working and got Billy everything he needed to fix the car. He bought a Ford until it's broken down. It's a lack of maintenance. Billy's little Mustang that he bought definitely suffers from a lack of maintenance. But Terry got them hooked up with everything they needed to go back to the shop and put it back together. And this is about where Uncle Bucko's week starts to go south. Oh. After Jeremy got done helping Billy put plug wires together, he took the 64 back to his shop to fix the exhaust system, clean out the carburetor, and hopefully, once and for all, seal the fuel tank. Since it's pretty cold outside, he fired up the wood burner in the shop and got the place warmed up. Once he got his fire started, he went straight to work on the exhaust manifold gaskets that were literally burnt out of the exhaust manifolds. Some of the crud that was in the fuel tank made its way through the fuel filter, got into the carburetor, and leaned the air fuel mixture out, causing the exhaust manifolds to run extremely hot. Once he had the exhaust donut gaskets replaced, he pulled the carburetor apart and began soaking the tank. Everything was going pretty good for Jeremy until he got to the back bowl on the carburetor, where he somehow broke a socket. Oh. Chumpy tools. Can't even take a par carburetor apart without failing. <laughs> now, of course, there's a protocol for any time Jeremy has to return anything to Mark's under warranty. So when I have tools fail, this is where they go. This is Chumpy's defective crap can. Here, Chumpy, try my nuts. After Jeremy prepared his warranty claim against Mark, he went out to flush out the tank one more time and then headed back to my shop to check on Billy. And the price is right. You're the winner of a running Mustang. Ta-da! <laughs> Little miles, super high horsepower. Guaranteed to get you where you want to go quickly. Especially if it's the wall. By Sunday, I was still trying to recuperate from my trip down to North Carolina. It was pretty cold outside, so I was in full hibernation mode. I did manage to go out to the shop for a little while and unpack some of the stuff out of the Malibu and put tools away. And Jeremy just so happened to stop by while I was out in the shop to give me an update on how he's getting along down at his shop working on the 64. Are you making any progress down there? I guess. You guess? Yeah. What do you got left to do? a fuel line and a stupid transmission speedo clip. Are you telling me my speedometer is going to work again? I hope. For how long? While it would be nice to have a working speedometer, my first concern is getting this gas tank sealed. Jeremy's got the inside of this tank cleaned up pretty decent. Now all he's got to do is pour the red coat in, slosh it around inside the tank, and let it set up. So while he's down at his shop working on that fuel tank, I decide to take advantage of the nice weather today and do a little tuning on my carburetor on the Malibu. Due to the fact that we're running on winter blend fuel, the carburetor is a little bit rich on tip-in, so I increased the size of the idle air bleeds from a 64 up to a 75. This should allow me to lean out the part throttle cruise and transition from idle into the main jet. After I got done making the changes to the carburetor, me and June Pup took the Malibu out for a little ride. The idle air bleed changes that I made made a drastic difference in part throttle cruise. This minor change will make a drastic improvement in fuel economy and give the car a lot more range on a tank of fuel. While I'm filling up the Malibu down at Speedway with E85, I get a text from my brother letting me know that he's on his way back to my shop in Vicky's old C10. He claims that the fuel system is completely spotless clean, the tanks are sealed, the speedometer is even fixed, and that he's ready for me to go take it for a test drive. Bring your mess out. So me and Jeremy go down to the filling station to top the fuel tanks off in the 64 and run it down the interstate for a few miles just to make sure everything's gonna be all right. At this point, we've set a new record already for how long the speedometer stays working before it breaks again. The gas gauge though, still doesn't quite work right. 
we'll have to work on that. But for now, I think Jeremy has redeemed himself at last. Well, you've totally redeemed yourself. Maybe you can take lessons off how I tweak the carburetor and do better next time. When I got back to the house, Sam and his girlfriend from Young and Boosted were here for dinner. And Vicki and I decided just to go down and get some Massey's pizza for everybody. And we took the 64. When we got back, Tommy and Billy were here and we all sat down and had pizza together and then turned in for the night. I wanted to make sure I got plenty of rest because I needed to get up first thing Monday morning and get started working on the 64. I definitely want to make some upgrades to the cooling system, install a transmission oil cooler, change the oil, change the transmission fluid, and I want to upgrade to a two-quart extra capacity aluminum transmission pan, which required a trip to see one of my favorite parts salesmen, Uncle Terry. What do you think, Uncle? This will cool it down. I hope so. Fall in the mountain, mountains of Tennessee, <laughs> Virginia. I hope so. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it got hot pulling that hill, Fancy Gap. Yeah, that's a hell of a hill. It is. It yeah, is. It that's is. A hell of a hill. And I think really what the problem was mostly is I couldn't lock a torque converter, and it was in third gear, pulling yeah. with the converter unlocked. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. So. I thought you had a switch on that one. Maybe no, it's just automatic on oh, that. It only locks, right. yeah, that one only locks yeah. the converter in overdrive. Right. And I need to be able to lock it in third gear when I'm pulling hills. Yeah, that'll help. That'll help a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that'll help it a lot. Because one way you can't go up hills in over, in, or, or they don't want to go down hills in overdrive. So, yeah, especially carrying precious cargo. <laughs> precious cargo, the OMG uh, 79 Malibu. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. It did pretty good down there at Wilkesboro. Did you see that? Yeah, I watched that video. I watched that video. Yeah, that's nice. It yeah, went 145, really 145, 60 foot on motor. Yeah. And I delayed the nitrous and faded it in real gentle and low gear because I don't want to break it down there. Right. But it went 141, and that was on slicks. So, right. I mean, if it was on a radial, it probably would have gone in the 630s. Right. Just with the same tune-up. Yeah, I saw, I saw it when you put it on a dyno. I was, uh, it was, it was pretty, comparatively speaking, to your engine dyno pools. Yeah. And what it was there, fifteen percent. Yep. It was dead on. Yeah. Percent. Yeah. Pretty cool. That was really nice. Really nice. And that was just on the one kit. That's just right. on the one fifty. And it's it's the track would had to be cold. Oh, uh, it wasn't that bad. I mean. I I think I got loose one time just because there was some dirt on it, but yeah. other than that, it was really pretty decent. I didn't that's have cool. any trouble. That's cool. That's a nice track. I like it that is. Track. I love that place. Yeah, it's beautiful cool. down there. That guy is super nice. Let me store the '64 in the barn or out yeah. in the shop, and yeah, you know. he seemed to be really nice. It looks like he's trying to really make a place come around. Yeah, so. yeah. Trying to combine no, everything. No prep, no prep, and bracket bracket guys. Yeah, which. I'm with you. I think, I think a lot of bracket guys once they go, if, if they go to a no prep event and let and watch it, they'll have bracket no prep cars. <laughs> I'll tell they you what, out. they could sure learn a lot in uh, tuning suspension. They can learn a whole lot in tuning suspension, and that's what a race cars are. Race car. And where it works as a no prep car, it'll be a badass bracket car because it has to. Yeah. Because you're running backside tracks, you're running, you're running in marbles, you're running all kinds of stuff, and the and the cars work. If the car works like that on a prep track, I've learned a lot since yeah. doing this stuff. You know, trying to make them hook on the street and hook yes. on no prep track. But yeah. in all honesty, the bracket guys, they they're usually their uh, suspension adjustments amount to tire pressure changes right. and bolt on shocks. Right. And, <laughs> and that's right. it. You're absolutely correct. And outside of that, if it doesn't hook, then it's the track's fault. Right. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, there's a lot to be learned there yeah. for just about anybody uh, and, and trying to tune suspension because with that Malibu came right off the trailer, went 145. And there was other cars there that were struggling a little bit, you know, but... But, I mean, it was like clockwork, 145, 145, 141, 141. Right. It's a bracket car. It's a bracket car. <laughs> so after I got done visiting with Uncle Terry and at Jeggs, I came back to the shop to find Uncle Bucko busy at work. Only there was one problem. I had made a little mistake. You forget to check something after you pull the drain plug on the transmission, Helpy Helperson?
No, I didn't check it, but the thing should have been drained the last time somebody used it. It's supposed to be drained every time somebody uses it. Obviously, that never happened the last time we changed oil in something. If you wonder what Uncle Bucko loves, it's an overflowing oil can. So after he got that taken care of, he started pulling the pan, but that wasn't the last thing he had to complain about. Check out the oil color. So Kenny decided to eat a can of spinach and decided to play pot pie with it. Jeremy claims that Kenny used excessive force when tightening the oil filter. We're changing Kenny Power's name to Jiffy Lube because I'm pretty sure he used an impact filter on. Personally, I think it's just the fact that Jeremy's weak. Let's get a good view of this dumbassery. Yeah, maintenance is important and to actually do it correctly. So says the guy that sent me on a 600 mile trip with a tank full of rust. Why don't you go in there and look at what all I brought you? Oh, I'm sure it's wonderful. What's all this horse shit? Transmission oil cooler with a fan. Bigger fan for the radiator. Aluminum. Cast aluminum deep oil pan for the transmission. And fittings, hoses, and... It's a half ton truck. What? It's a half ton truck. So? We're doing big things here. In a half ton truck? You gonna pull a 50 foot car trailer with it? No, I just wanna be able to pull my open car trailer up Fancy Gap and not overheat anything. Clearly, Jeremy doesn't share my enthusiasm for these upgrades on the C10. His attitude this week is actually pretty poor, and it gets worse every time he goes down to Mark's. What are you doing? I'm working. Yeah, it well, looks thinking. like it. I'm thinking. That, what, what do you want? That explains the smoke cloud. Jeremy just loves giving Mark a hard time, and today he's getting an extra hard kick in the nuts. You owe me one socket. Yeah, I don't know. It's been on an impact No. Yeah. Yes, it has. I think you had the wrong size. Negative. You split those like yeah. I don't use an impact on a carburetor. What? I don't use impacts on carburetors. No, an impact driver. It's got some wear on the inside that hex. Look, it's got the telltale bulging of the corners, and that means it's been under undue stress. Do you know where that's probably from? I don't know. Kenny Power. Oh, he's had it on the impact wrench. Probably. Or Change clicks in and out of it. Oh, yeah. See? See, I knew. I knew it. I knew. Abuse. So Jeremy's warranty claim has been denied. Judgment in favor of the defendant. All right. Enough horsing around. It's time to get serious and get some work done on this 64. In order for me to be able to lock the converter and drive, I have to bypass the fourth gear pressure switch in the valve body. Once we had that taken care of, it's time to go ahead and install the new aluminum transmission pan and then set the truck back on the ground so we can refill the transmission with transmission fluid and fill the crankcase with seven quarts of Brad Penn 10W40 motor oil and fill the transmission with six quarts of Wolf's Head synthetic transmission fluid. Then we fired up the truck and checked the transmission fluid level with the engine running. I took a few minutes to get everything cleaned up underneath the hood and wiped down the chrome grill in the front bumper before I turned my attention to inside the cab. Since I plan on locking the torque converter manually while I'm towing, I need to put a switch on the dash of the truck in a convenient location, preferably without drilling any new holes. Vicky's truck didn't come from the factory with a lighter, so there was a plastic plug in the dash where the lighter would normally go. So that's where I installed the torque converter lockup switch. While I'm busy working on that, Jeremy started making new brackets to mount this transmission oil cooler up underneath the truck, right behind the front bumper. Kenny came in today and he started working on fixing some taillight wiring that kind of fell apart on my way home from North Carolina. Now we had been cooped up in the shop for almost two days because of the weather, but thankfully the sun's finally starting to come out, the road's starting to dry up, and so is the driveway. That means we should be able to finish this truck up today and put the trailer on it and take it for a test drive loaded with the Malibu behind it. Given the fact that it's almost 30 degrees warmer now than it was the night I went down to North Carolina through the mountains, this should give me a pretty good indication of any improvements I've made in the cooling system and the transmission. At this point, the only thing we've got left to do is fix the left rear tail light and turn signal and install a relay underneath the dash for the torque converter lockup. Then it was finally time to back the old 64 out into the sunlight, hook the trailer to it, and load the Malibu up, strap it down, and head out on the road. Now here locally in central Ohio, we don't have any 5% grades for three or four miles like you do down through the mountains in West Virginia, Virginia, and into northern North Carolina. But we do have a state highway that runs north out of Granville about 35 minutes from our house, 
that has some relatively short but very steep grades. Steep enough that I'll be able to find out whether or not the truck pulls better with the converter locked and if the improvements made to the cooling system have helped. And just to try and tax the cooling system as much as I possibly can today, I go ahead and turn the air conditioning on full blast as I head north out of Granville on State Route 661. Now, if you've ever been out this way, you know that the hills just north of Granville are pretty taxing on a truck pulling a trailer. So I reach down to lock the converter and realize my speedometer's quit working again. So I guess we're going back to the drawing board with the speedometer. But fortunately, the old 64 pulls every hill with a converter locked without a single problem. Locking the converter has allowed us to lower the transmission temperature and the new fan has also helped keep the engine coolant temperature down below 210 degrees, which is 30 degrees cooler than what I'm normally seeing pulling the trailer in ambient temperatures 20 degrees colder. So with the exception of the speedometer failing, everything's going pretty good. On my way back to the shop, I decided to put the truck into the wind out on the highway at about 75 miles an hour and the truck didn't have any problems towing with the converter locked in overdrive and the coolant temperature stayed nice and steady at 195, right where the thermostat is set to open. Anyway, once we got back to the shop, we went ahead and unloaded the Malibu and backed it in the garage and then pulled the 64 inside. I think we're just about ready to hit the road again, but you never know where you're gonna see me show up next. What you doing there, Squirrely? Working. I'm always working. Emails and organizing. And... You look a little funny with your glasses. I'm sorry. Let me take them off. Let's try that. <laughs> so my eyes get a little tired by the end of the day, and then I have to take my contacts out and put my glasses on. So what do you got there? Those signs? Yes. Are they selling? Is yes. anybody buying them? Yes. All right. Well. So... You know how we used to put pictures up at the end of the video with people in their merch? <clears throat> yeah. I would kind of like to see people with their man caves and their shops and with their signs on the wall. I've been slacking on that for a while. You have. But in my defense, you generally procrastinate. <laughs> and I tell you, if you want do it now. photos, don't wait till the last don't minute. Don't wait till the last minute. And what do you always do? Forget procrastinate you don't forget you intentionally wait till the last well, minute can we go back now and do some of the pictures because i have like a little stash of pictures okay crit the people sending in pictures and their christmas stuff so if you guys are wondering why your pictures haven't gotten put <laughs> up it's because miss vicky procrastinates and usually my video is already done and then i'm like oh can we do pictures no no okay so i already sent you some pictures so yes. i did it at like noon is this when we're supposed to show the pictures like right now yeah no during the Wait, music no like at the end with the music oh you want me to procrastinate now no just do it at the end. <laughs> but yeah let's see <clears throat> send in um i've already got some pictures that we're going to show tonight but if y'all want to send me either through facebook or email i would pictures. rather they just email them okay being tagged on Facebook sometimes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's see where you hang, hung your signs in your shops, on the walls, in the man caves, and uh, and then with your new gear, the new Gas and Freedom shirts and all the hoodies and all the new stuff. What about the EV shirts? Have those come in yet? Mm -hmm. They're in? Yeah. Where are they? I haven't seen them. Well, we already sold the first batch. Now we're waiting oh, for the Oh, you batch. mean... Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. I, did I even get one? Yeah. <laughs> That's all you've got and left is that tiny little pile over there? I know, because there's more coming. Um, well, next when are week. they coming? Next week. And guess what else I ordered? What did you order? I didn't even tell you. <laughs> <gasps> what? I got that same design... And a metal sign. Did you really? Yeah, but it's going to be... Oh, that's going to be sick. Like rectangle. I think it's like 8 by 12. And I think they come like next week. So watch for Ooh. those. Yeah. All right. But, yeah, pretty cool. So and, we should tell people too, because I like a sale and I like to save money. And um, 
people can still use their discount code at Nitrous Express. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've been slacking on that, too. Uncle Jimmy See, Dale gave me some crap the other day so about this, actually. So we got busy through the holidays, and I wasn't helping you with details. And now we've been, it's like, been a while. detailless for, like, a month. <laughs> <laughs> And it's all gone to crap. So Oh, <laughs> it's all gone to crap, has it? So remind people the OMG code for Nitrous Express. Yeah, if you're if you if you go to nitrousexpress.com, mm -hmm. you can use promo code OMG for ten percent off yep. on your orders. And it doesn't matter whether it's a nitrous bottle, a nitrous kit, or a nice little hoodie like Miss Vicky's wearing. Leggings, That's they, a zip up. Tank tops, they they have sell leggings. Yeah. <gasps> Where's your leggings? I haven't seen those yet. <laughs> They have You're out here marching around in your freaking PJs. <laughs> I ain't seen no leggings. Listen, who else do we have? I think Harley with? had some on the other day. Yep. She got some. Yep. All right, what else? Oh, so the old man's garage carburetors. Yeah. If you guys are still interested in OMG carburetor, they're working on that. I tried to call Tim tonight, but he didn't answer. But down at ATM, I just threw him under the bus, didn't I? You're going to have to take that out. I'm not taking it's it out. It's late. You can't. It's like 10 o'clock. I never He's stop working. already in bed. No, I never no stop working. No wonder he didn't answer. <laughs> oh. Sorry, right, Tim. So, so yeah. You can um, call in to ATM and order whatever carb you need. There's options. Tony's texting me. That's why my head tilted. What? I was like this. <laughs> Trying to read it? Yeah, I was trying to read this text message. <sighs> what else? What else? Um, I don't know, but this is getting really long. It's five minutes in. There was something else that I was supposed to say. Can I come back to you? Yeah, pause. I remembered. Okay, I'm every, ready. We got to remind everybody. Every, every purchase. Every purchase this month. Yes. Get you in a drawing. For, for a carburetor. Yes, I have two mm -hmm. carburetors over here. I have many carburetors actually, and I don't have enough room in the shop for all my carburetors. I just I'm out of shelf space. So the person who wins will be able to pick which one. Yes, yeah, so I've got two gas 750 carburetors. I've got a Proform 750 that came off the 55, mm -hmm. and I have a red and polished gas 750 quick fuel carburetor that was on Billy's Mustang when he had it. And it was on my Malibu before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's over there. Yep, so we will do a drawing. So and I'm gonna clean them up, get them, get them off the shelf. I'll mm -hmm. get them all cleaned up and ready to go. Yeah. They'll be ready to bolt on when you get them. Yeah. But I need to get rid of some of this stuff. I've got way too much crap out here to get rid of. <laughs> okay, are we done? Um, oh God. All right, so as you saw in the video, the old 64 is back up and running. I think it's just about ready to hit the road again. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure where I'm headed next. I've had a lot of good feedback. I've had a lot of track owners call or text or message uh, asking if I would mind coming down and visiting and doing a little history documentary on their track. And um, and I'm, I really enjoy that, to be honest with you. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's a good opportunity for me to make content and travel and test. I really enjoy doing it. So we'll see where that leads. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have to do these, but right now I do have a little bit of time uh, while the kids are down working on stuff. And Tommy's down for the count right now with his leg. He's doing a lot better. He had his surgery the other day and he's doing quite a bit better. He's actually able to walk already, which is pretty amazing to me. But, uh, once the kids get the cars back up and running and they want to start racing, we're going to be traveling again. But uh, in the meantime, I've got some time to myself where I can go do whatever I want to do. Tomorrow, I plan on working on the Malibu a little bit. Uh, I have a few hours in the morning tomorrow to spend on it. And then I'm headed to Columbus for a meeting at Jack's Wax. So uh, I'll be driving the Malibu in there. It looks like we're going to have 50 degrees and sun tomorrow, believe it or not, in January in Ohio. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and the rain the last two days has washed all the salt off the road. So I'm pretty excited about that. So that's about going to do it for tonight, guys. I need to get this video finished up and, uh, get it uploaded. I know it's been a few days since I uploaded and they're getting fewer and farther between, but I'm going to try my best to rectify that. It's just been difficult when I'm traveling. 
Uh, it takes me a few days to, I don't know. Catch up. Catch up. <laughs> Listen, I'll crack the whip. I'll crack oh, the whip. Oh, you ain't doing that. <laughs> it just takes me a few days to recuperate, I guess, from traveling. And uh, something uh, people don't realize is when you're traveling and you're trying to film and you're trying to create content, it takes two to three times longer to do whatever it is you're doing if you're trying to film it. So it just takes a lot out of you. There's a lot uh, going on that people don't realize and don't see. And it's just difficult. It's very hard. And uh, I'm trying to do my best. But well, after the, the holidays, the it kind of slowed get, down. But By the time you get a video up, then you've got to start making another one. Right. Like it, it never stops. Of, yeah, you need a couple days of content for the next one. So Right. So we're going to try and get back on it and try and do better. It's just been a little bit difficult after the holidays and everything we've had going on. But we'll be back on this thing pretty hard here soon. So that's about it for tonight. You got anything else, Squirrely? That is it. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.